I was so excited yesterday when I saw a nice big box of jelly beans. Four quid, that's a big box of jelly beans. I thought I'll finally be able to fill up the sweet dispenser that I was given when I left work. That's how many jelly beans came in the thing. I've eaten one. Hello, I'm Kev, welcome to the daily vlog. Today's vlog topic, if we were sticking to the vlog every day in August rules that we set out back on the 1st of August, was supposed to be, hold on, what is something interesting about the city you live in? We were heading into the city, which is Peterborough, to have a little look around to try and find something interesting, and that would have been no mean feat if we'd have managed to pull that one off. But, instead, we're shelving that because we've found ourselves a little autism learning point, key moment, whatever you want to call it. Basically, um, I was going to go on my own, but we asked Andy if he wanted to come with us. For the first time ever, he just agreed. Yeah, I'll come out. I don't know where we're going, but I'll come out. This was, this is big. Anyone who's been watching the vlog for a long time will know that it has been a long time since pre-vlog days since he's come out with us without having a full breakdown of where we were going what we were doing how long we were going to be there and also getting some kind of reward as part of the trip whether it's a trip to a church or a trip to a uh, mcdonald's or any of the other things that he likes to do but he, he was just happy to just get his shoes on come out get in the car but once we were in the car i think he then realised what he'd signed himself up for and started questioning what we were doing. So we're saying, right, well, we need to go to the post office. We've got to pick up the PO box, uh, which, by the way, was empty. I thought there was some, someone said they'd sent me something, but apparently it's not come through yet. I was very sad. Um, to be fair, it's only actually officially existed three days. So if there'd been anything in it at this stage, that would have been quite impressive. It's a warm day. But he started questioning what we we're doing. So we, we said, right, we've got the reason I'm in the car is because it's so windy. I hope that hasn't just made the sound really awful. Um, so we told him that we were going to be going into town. We were going to have a look at the cathedral, which he likes to do. We were going to have a little walk around the town centre. Um, he'd get a McDonald's while we were there, but it was going to be a McDonald's after we'd done what we wanted to do. And he started really questioning it more and more and more. And it became pretty clear he really didn't want to go to the post office. He really didn't want to go into town. All he wanted was a McDonald's. Um, and he started saying, no Queensgate, no Queensgate, no post office. Queensgate's the shopping centre we were going to park in. So I said to him as we were driving, and I couldn't record any of this because obviously driving the car um, and I couldn't turn around to film him and we don't really want to film meltdowns anyway. And it wasn't a meltdown, it was just a, a bit of a moment. He didn't go into full on meltdown mode, but I think we've shown you enough of those. So you get the idea at this point, you don't need to keep drilling or people with autism sometimes lose control, but we don't need to keep throwing that at you. Um, but. I said to him, okay, well, if we, if we don't go to post office, if we don't go to Queensgate, we're not going to McDonald's. And he went, fine, okay, no McDonald's. So I checked again, okay, what, so no, no, no post office, no Queensgate, no McDonald's, just go home, yes. So we turned the car around, we went home, and then he started to panic because he realized we weren't going to McDonald's. Um, started saying, McDonald's and home, McDonald's and home, no, no McDonald's. And this went on pretty much all the way home to the point where he's gone home Having been out for like 10 minutes without really doing anything, no reward for being out. We did go to the, well I went to the post office while him and Anna sat in the car. And it might not seem like a lot, but for us, that's the first time he's been out in probably a year and a half, two years, without us having to bribe him into doing it. Yes, he still wanted a bribe, but he didn't force the bribe by throwing himself to the floor, taking off his clothes, anything like that. And he agreed to go out. I mean, that, it might have just been a blip. He might not have realized what he was agreeing to, or it might have been the first stages of his anxiety, perhaps taking on a different form or easing, or I don't really understand. I try to understand, but having never suffered from it myself, I don't really understand the ins and outs of anxiety. Can it just hit a breaking point? Or I'm probably showing myself as really ignorant. Um, but I think for a minute, he kind of forgot he didn't want to do it and just, yeah, all right, whatever. And then it was only when it was happening that he started to panic. So to me, that feels like progress. Um, but what he did then start to do once once we were out and he realised he didn't know what was going on, he started to really panic and started reeling off all the things that we're doing over the next month, trying to piece them together in order and when they were happening. 
Um, so we're going for a night away in my dad's tent. He's got another trip to his respite care. Um, he's going back to school in September, which he's aware of, we keep talking to him about. Um, he wants to go to McDonald's at some point. He wants to now go into Queensgate at some point and earn a reward. Um, and we were struggling to get it all into any kind of coherent order. So the new plan, rather than me going into town and trying to find something interesting about Peterborough, I've decided that something interesting about Peterborough is him. Um, and I'm now heading to a shop that I think sells calendars. And I'm gonna try and find a calendar that we can, do. I don't just want a normal calendar, I want a calendar that's gonna have like the next six weeks on at any one time. So it might even be a whiteboard that we customize ourselves, Because I want to be able to break down all of the stuff that he's doing over the next four to six weeks. What days he's doing it, what days he's got completely free to do what he wants. So he can start to get comfortable with when things are happening. He's fine with days of the week, he's fine with months, he's fine with, um, with days, times, all that stuff. Um, and I think if we've got a board that says, right, well this is the date you're doing this. And importantly, this is the date you go back to school it might just become a non-negotiable in his mind and we might just get to that date and he'll just go that's what i'm hoping that's what today that today has filled me with hope that that might be about to happen but i've sat in my car talking at you for long enough at least it's not the garage eh um we're now going to head into the shop and try and find something appropriate to this task i may not have mentioned that the shop we're going into to try and buy a calendar is the shop i've taken you to before which is the place that sells really random bits of everything I'm going in for a calendar. There's absolutely no way of knowing what I'm coming out with. Right, we've got multiple options. We have that one, which is pretty cool. Week to view, so at least it's you'll get used to turning over each week and maybe peeking ahead, but it's not immediately in his head when back to school is. This one does the whole month, but again, it's gonna get to the end of August and then school's gonna be a surprise a couple of days later. This one will do this month, last month, and next month, which is good, but there's no room to write on it. None of them are exactly what I was hoping for. Or there's something like this that has the calendar on plus a whiteboard bit at the top that we could write a reminder on for, and remember, at the start of August, he's back to school. Hmm. The big issue, of course, that I'm looking at all of them now, is that they all start in January. So, that's quite a significant problem as well. I think this is just because I'm still in teacher mode. Even like the big wall planners run January to December. I'm used to them going September to August. Even that wouldn't really work. But, like, they've got diaries. I don't think a diary's going to do the job. They've got, a, like, an academic diary that goes July to July. If we had that in calendar form, that would be fine, but I just don't think you'd look at a diary or you'd lose a diary. It needs to be something that's on the wall and really visual. I think I'm gonna to have to find a different aisle and try and find a whiteboard that I can then sort of customize and make something along the lines of that, but as a big whiteboard that goes like six weeks at a time that I'll just regularly update. I think that's the current plan. This already exists. This might be exactly what we need. I'm thinking, rather than it being as it is at the moment, the days of the week and then names of three different people, we could have this week, next week, two weeks time. That might work. Might even carry that around with me until I find something better. And there we have the finished ish version for him now and um, we've decided just this week and next week going two weeks in advance is going to confuse him too much but monday to sunday shows him what he's doing on each day so this week he's already been to see bb's land then we're going to my dad's on sunday next week he's free monday to friday but we are going camping at the weekend and then it's his little advance warning things the things that are going to be making it into next week eventually so we've got a trip to grantham for the dietitian boston for his pediatrician or Forget, I might even be cams we're seeing in Boston. And then he's at his residential place and then five weeks time he's back to school. One other thing I got when I was in the factory shop is I got three tiny little glass picture frame things. They're almost certainly not glass for a quid um, because I wanted something to frame my access all areas match day pass when I did the match day announcing thing last week. Now I know I'm not getting the job. I may as well have the 
um, the pass on the wall somewhere because um, it's a cool thing to have for one game only I as a lifelong Peter United fan had access all areas didn't use it because I'm a chicken but you know I had it I could have gone in the change rooms if I wanted to I was basically a member of the first team squad um, it's not going to fit perfectly because slightly slightly too small but I can just fold that around it doesn't need to be kept perfect I do need to get this stupid price sticker off here though all right so if we put that in there and then the little cardboard backing missing having constant access to a guillotine for doing stuff like this and then if we just pop the the little doohickeys back on we're just squashing the paper down a little bit but I don't think that really matters it was either this or it was going to get thrown in the bin so if it's a little squashed so be it there we have my framed ish but ready to go on the wall or stand on my desk proof that for one day and one day only there you go Kev had access all areas at the posh by the time you're watching this vlog in the morning I will already be on my way to London for Summer in the City. It's a creator day tomorrow. I'm only there for the creator day because I've never been to Summer in the City before. I have no idea what to expect from the event as a whole. So if you've ever been to Summer in the City before, please let me know down in the comments what I should expect, particularly if you've been to the creator day. And I'll be making decisions while I'm there about whether or not I want to go for the full weekend next year. It's not something Anna's interested in, so I'm going to a convention on my own for the first time which is going to be a new experience. So if you are going to be in and around the XL or that part of London at any point today for you lot, um, or if, particularly if you're going to somewhere in, somewhere in the city itself, um, let me know and we shall meet up, shake hands, do all the things that people do when they're meeting each other for the first time. You know the drill. Uh, but if there's anything you want, I mean, I, I don't know. I was going to say if there's anything you want me to look out for or anything, I just don't know what to expect. Is it like a con they always have a stand at Comic Con, but I can't imagine it's anything like Comic Con because it's YouTube, not comics. So tomorrow is going to be an interesting vlog because it's the first time I've had absolutely no idea what what it's going to be about. I do know because it's the Creator Day. Um, I'm not allowed to go around there pestering people to try and be in pictures and stuff because we're supposed to be there as equals. But We'll see. If you've enjoyed that today, please make sure you pop a like on there for me. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. And thank you very much for watching.